G'day guys, welcome to Simple Homebrew. I'm doing a passivation of my Apollo Titan today. If you're interested, stick around. So two months ago, I bought myself an Apollo Titan from Keg King. They sold it to me at a good price. And uh, I made a brew in it, and the brew was uh, Mangrove Jack's Gluten-Free Pale Ale. And uh, I did a tasting on it last week. Here's the link to the video. And I didn't like it that much. And I wondered if maybe it was something to do with the actual Apollo. Now, just after I did that brew, I was told that I should passivate the stainless steel fermenter. And I had no idea what that was. I never knew that we had to do that. I never knew that was a part of a brewing process or a cleaning process. And now I do. I did a lot of research, tried to find out what I needed to do, and watched a lot of videos out there and a lot of people out there who brew, amateurs like me and decided I need to passivate my Apollo. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to give it a good clean and I will actually acid wash it so that it creates a chromium oxide layer that protects the stainless steel from potential rusting. So let's get started. So what we've got is our Apollo. This is the stainless steel fermenter. Inside is just a dip tube. A dip tube for the probe. So what we have is our stainless steel fermenter. Inside I've, I've done a brew so I can actually smell a little bit of wafting smell. I need to mix up now some brewer's friend or brewer's cleaner. So I've got a Atomic ABC Alkaline Brewery Cleaner. Uh, Atomic from Key King as well. I need to mix up, I think it's uh, just enough you know, to clean it. I only want to put it, you know, maybe 10, 15 litres in and give it a bit of a scrub. And then once I've done that, I'll get to the next bit. Five grams for every one litre. I'm going to pour about 10 litres of hot water in. 10 litres, so it'll be about three jugs of this. That's a three litre jug. And uh, I'm then going to put in one, no, five grams of cleaning product for every litre of water I put in. So that would be 50 grams of cleaning product. Then I'll give it a bit of a wipe down, scrub, clean, make sure it is clean internally before I do the acid wash. Okay, so that's 10 litres. I will now measure out uh, 50 grams of wash and put that in. So this is a 60 ml cup. I'll just use the whole thing. Let's fill her up. So this is a pain in the butt. I don't know if you guys can see this from that camera, but I bought this cleaner and it was hard in the actual container. So I had a lot of little lumps in it. If you can see it, I don't know from that camera. Try that one. Um, basically, these lumps were very hard to work with. As you can see, I'm wearing gloves. Uh, basically, it's very important you wear gloves. A lot of this stuff has a little bit of acid in it, a little alkaline. Um, I have dry skin problems anyway. So that is very vital that I put gloves on so I don't get it all over my fingers. Now, it's pretty warm, that water, to be honest. Now, I need to get a brush, something to stir it with. I'll be back. They recommend a tough bristle brush but not nothing that's abrasive, which is fine. Um, I did clean this in, in the past anyway, but I just want to be sure. So I just stir this cleaning fluid in. And I'll be using this on other products too today. Uh, I want to do my grandfather as well, which is uh, well overdue. So I'll get my horsehair brush and I'll just clean the inside rub all the sides and edges and up inside underneath every part that's going to need to be acid treated hopefully i would have gotten off all the excess i'm pretty sure most of it be gone anyway you just have to do what you have to do don't you it's not easy actually that's scraping all the time is driving me nuts uh okay that's not going to work. I'll have to get something else. 
So what I've got, I'm just got a bit of cloth. I have, like I said, I have cleaned this anyway in the past before I used it last. But I'm going to use this cloth to just wipe down all the edges. It's a soft tea, uh, t towelette. Just to see if I can remove any specks of anything that might have been left behind when, when it was manufactured. Oh, nearly dropped it. Now the reason why we do this is to get off any grime or any metal flakes that might be left behind on the inside of the stainless steel. This is, it looks like a very polished internal part. It's very good, to be honest. <gasps> it's hot. <laughs> so we just get every surface, wipe it all down until I've hit every part. So I'll just go right around into the holes. All right, right around. Um, pay more, pay a lot of attention on the wow points just to make sure they are rubbed and cleaned. Like I said, it's, it has been cleaned, but I just want to be sure. I'm going to take this wash now and pour it into my grandfather so I can do it as well. And then I do say to leave this in here for an hour, which is what I'll do, and I'll come back to it, pour it into my grandfather, let it sit in there while I'm doing the passivation in this one. Once the hour's over, I'll be back to show you how to passivate. Alright, so it's finished. I'm going to get the lid off. I'm going to pour it into my grandfather and then start grandfather. Gee, my grandfather wouldn't be happy about me pouring it into him. I'll probably pour it into grandfather, what do you reckon? Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> um, I'm going to pour it into my grandfather. Um, rip off the lid. Now, there shouldn't be any pressure under this. It's only uh, 40, 45 degree heat, heated water. The good thing about it, everything gets a good clean. So it's pretty cloudy now. I'll pour it in here, you won't see it. I'll just pour it into my grain father, quickly. That's looking pretty shiny, pretty clean in there. Um, good, good wipes, got a couple of little leftover granules in there, so I'll need to rinse that. So I'll just quickly put just fresh water in there. The fresh water will just give it a nice clean and rinse off all the excess soap that I've left behind. Whoop. All right, that's been rinsed out. I did that out in the back, out the uh, back hose there. I need to now passivate. I need to actually put the acid mix in. Now, what I'm using is Stellasan. If you don't know what passivation is, passivation mainly means creating a chromium oxide layer on top of your stainless steel just to make sure that we don't get rust. So it gives you a bit of a layer of protection layer of chromium oxide between the stainless steel and the oxygen in the air. So the moisture can't actually create uh, oxidation to create uh, rust. So this is to prevent that from happening. We'll have to do this maybe once a year, um, maybe not, <laughs> but I've got to do it once at least. So the contents or the measurement, I've figured it out. Um, a, lot of, a lot of Americans have been doing it and they've got their own uh, ounces that they use. It's actually 225 mil for 30 litres. That's about the right measurement. I'm going to start pouring it in now. Uh, it does say use warm water, uh, but my tap water is going to be warm. It's about 30 degrees Celsius, so it's warm enough. And basically, I'm going to fill, fill this right to the absolute rim and have this mixed in with it. And then leave it sit for an hour to an hour and a half and basically tip it out and let it dry. We'll tell you about that in a sec. Right, so this is a 500 mil container, so it'll be half of one of these. Luckily, I do have another container of this. Um, so we need 250 mil. This does actually have a mil measurement on the base here. So I will put water in this first. I will fill it up to about two litres and then top it up halfway line, 250 mil with sanitizer. That'll give you the right measurement of acid you want to put in there. Now, sanitizer, like this one, has phosphoric acid. It also has dodecyl benzene sulfonic acid, 15%, uh, and just some ingredients to make it foamy. The foamy, it's not going to foam up because I'm hoping to put this in. Actually, I probably should put this in last, which I will. I'll put this in last so it doesn't foam up. It is going to get foamy, unfortunately. Uh, so I'll do that 
now. I'll fill this up to 30 litres or 29 litres and pop in some sanitizer, mix it all through, and let it sit. All right, so I filled that up to around about here. Um, I just want to put in some, put in this guy. Uh, I will measure it using the jug because that's a pretty good judgment of measurement. I'm going to use this hot, what, what's left in this bottle, so because I want to use it up anyway, it's, it's leaking. But I do want 225 mil. Oh. <laughs> I haven't opened this chamber yet, look. 225 mil. Remember, wear gloves. I'm wearing uh, nitri uh, nitrite gloves. That will definitely save your hands from getting any acetane acid in them so that's that one that is at the moment at 100 mil we don't want to go 250 do we we want to go 225 I do have atomic 15 sanitizer and now this sanitizer I read has the same ingredients with danger storage container first aid directions so I can use this just the same 1.5 yeah so it's the same measurement so what I'll do is I'll just pour this until we get to 250, oh, 225 mil. So that's 200 mil. 225, a bit more. Right, we're about 225 mil. Not entirely important that it's perfect. Just turn that off for a second, it's noisy. And I will now add that in. I'm going to have to obviously rinse this out, so we'll do that now. I don't want to mix it up too much because I don't want it to get foamy. Just being extra cautious. Which will top it up all the way to the rim and that will help mix it for you as well when I do it. Not much foam at all, how cool is that? Right up to the rim. Actually, I probably should leave it there because I've got to put other bits in there with it. Right, that's almost to the top. I did realize I have to put these in. It's probably gonna overflow. As I go down, yeah, we're gonna get an overflow, so I'll pop that around. Just to soak up some of the liquid. Soak it. Yeah. I didn't take into account I have to put this in, but it's going to be perfect because it'll be right on the edge of full. Just soak a bit more up. Put that on there. I will now pop the lid on. We have every surface inside touching. I will, it's going to be heavy, so I will uh, just want to roll it to mix it a little. Even though it's already pretty mixed from, from washing. No air in there, so I'll put that back up. All right, that's chocolate block. So what I'll do now is leave that there for about an hour and a half to let the sanitizer or the acid, which is now more potent than any sanitizer we've had in the past, get it to soak through into the steel and etch it. So now that the stainless or this, the contaminants that may be on the surface of the stainless are now getting eaten away by the acid mix that's already in there. So in an hour and a half, I'm coming back. I'm gonna empty it out. We're gonna dry it and see what happens. Actually, there's a hint. Apparently you leave it, pour, pour it out and leave it dry in the air. The oxygen is what causes the chemical reaction to create the chromium oxide layer so we'll see what happens hey all right it's been an hour and 15 minutes it's long enough i haven't got time i have to get stuff done so i will now open this and pour it into my next vessel um now the problem we're going to have now is 
it's going to foam up when I pour it in. This is an issue. But I haven't got much of a choice. Maybe I should siphon it, hey? I've got a siphon. We shall siphon it with this baby. Where's my siphoner? There it is. Okay. I will siphon it. Mainly because that's the smart thing to do. What do you reckon? Get that in there so it's wet. There we go. Alright. I'm going to siphon it because I don't want it to foam up too much. I guess this is a really easy way of doing it. And I don't have to lift it either because I won't hurt myself. How cool is that? So what I'm doing now is basically the grain father is a 30 litre unit. Um, and this is 30 litres coming out. So it should pretty much fill it right up. So all my stainless stuff has been done. I will now let that work through in my grain father and passivate it, but I don't need to show you that. So we're going to stop. We are pretty much done. I will leave the tools and bits in my grandfather for another hour, hour and a half, and proceed to tip that out, get rid of it, water it down because we need to water it down. And uh, I will basically go, take a photo of the results once it's dry. And like I said, you don't wipe it or dry, dry. You let it dry naturally so that the uh, chemical reaction can take place. Cheers guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thank you to my patrons for looking after the channel and everybody else who looks after the channel. Um, it's been awesome. Looking after this channel helps me grow and get more educational videos out if I can and helps you guys learn and enjoy a bit of my mess ups. Alright guys, catch you in the new one. See ya.